first episode, the first seminar of Present Truth. I want to welcome you. I'm glad that you're here. I hope that everybody has a Bible because we're going to use it very much today. Everybody's talking about the end of the world. It's a subject that seems to be on everyone's lips. And as we look at that subject tonight, we see many different sources telling us different things about the end of the world. We have scientists that believe that the end of the world will come through possibly the melting of the ice caps and that bringing destruction upon the world. Other scientists yet believe that there will be a meteor someday that could strike the earth. And there are movies that are made about that and different magazines that come out with that as their headline story. Yet others believe that a nuclear war is inevitable. There's enough bombs and enough people that own them now that this could be a possibility. Some believe that uh, maybe aliens will come and one day take over the world. And with all the extraterrestrial buzz that's out there, that could be another possibility, they say. Some look to psychics and astrologers and uh, the spirit world, so to speak, for their answers on this subject. And others turn to tarot cards and people that can read the future that way. Talking to the dead is another way that people think that possibly they could figure how this old world is going to come to an end. Uh, some may be familiar with the man Nostradamus, a very popular name when it comes to prophecy. And here's a magazine, one of the, uh, the ones you see as you check out at the grocery store. It says, Prophecies of Nostradamus. And it's interesting, as you go to the bookstore and you look at all the books on prophecy, I just picked out one in general on Nostradamus, and it had this to say. It said, out of 250 specific published predictions, we found less than 3%, which in other words would be 6, that we could list as reasonably fulfilled, and 97% out of 244 that missed the mark completely. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to put my faith in something that's that, uh, that has missed the mark that clearly. That would be like aiming a shotgun up into the sky and shooting at a flock of birds going by. You're bound to hit one or two, but there's enough that you didn't hit as well. So you wouldn't want to put your faith in something like that. Now what we want to look at today, of course, is what the Bible says about the world that we live in. And what it says about the climax or the end of that world. Now, the book that you hold in your hands is a very interesting book. The Holy Bible contains 66 books inside of it. It was written over a 1,600-year period of time. 39 of those books are found in what we call the Old Testament. If you split your Bible somewhere close to the middle, you'll see a break in what they call the Old Testament and the New Testament. 27 of those books are found in the New Testament. Now, for the longest time, the earliest manuscripts that we had for the Bible that you hold dated back to 900 A.D. And this left a lot of skeptics uh, criticizing the word that you now hold, saying that we don't know for sure how accountable, how true it is to the original text. But in 1948, some small children found what they thought were just pottery uh, clay pots that actually contained what we know now to be the Dead Sea Scrolls. And you see in some of these photographs uh, the caves that they were discovered in. What's interesting about these Dead Sea Scrolls is that they take us back even further, now back to 125 BC. And uh, what's interesting is you can find in the Dead Sea Scrolls almost word for word the same Bible that you hold in your hands now, at least the Old Testament portion of that. Here's a picture from Isaiah. Uh, found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And again, as translators are looking at these scrolls, they're finding that the Bible that they had uh, matches up with these, these scrolls that date back even further. So it's very interesting that the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, really worked in the favor for the Bible. Now, another thing that we need to look at as we open this Bible tonight is to know that it passes something called the historicity test. Now, that's just a big fancy word that means that history and the Bible go hand in hand. They have not proved one wrong or the other. Now in archaeology they have found many things that again will back up this historicity test. Here's something called the Rosetta Stone which they found that uh, goes along with the Bible. Uh, they believed for the longest time that writing wasn't around during the time of Moses. So a lot of critics would try to prove the Bible wrong. They would say there's no way that the form of writing was around, or the art of writing, I should say, during the time of Moses. 
But since then, they have dug up whole libraries of stuff that proves that the Bible was true, that there did, that writing did exist uh, during the time of Moses and even before that. Uh, you can look on the hieroglyphics of Egypt, on the walls there, the carvings and the paintings, and see accurate depictions of the flood, uh, the story of Joseph, etc. So on these cylinders that we find, tablets, brick walls, manuscripts, all the things that we continue to dig up and find, the Bible continues to be true. I know for a long time they tried to prove that Nebuchadnezzar was never a king in the kingdom of Babylon. But through deep, uh, recent archaeological discoveries, we find that Nebuchadnezzar certainly was a king in Babylon. Now, if you're anything like me, uh, the fact that the Bible is, is historically correct is not really that important. Uh, we can look at history books and so on to find that. But I want to know, what does the Bible say about the future? If it can tell me the past, let's see if it can tell the future. So we're going to look at that tonight, and it's called Prophecy. And we're going to take a look at what that Bible actually says about the future. And we're going to find that this Bible is not an old book that just tells us the past, but it actually has the ability, it is the living Word of God, to tell us the future. If you would, open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 46 and verses 9 and 10. Isaiah is in the Old Testament. We're going to turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 46 and verses 9 and 10. And 10. And actually, since we're all turning there, let's just start a little bit earlier. I'm going to start in verse 5. So, Isaiah 46, and we'll begin in verse 5. The Bible says, To whom will you liken me, and make me equal, and compare me, that we should be alike? They lavish gold out of the bag, and weigh silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith, and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves, yes, they worship. They bear it on the shoulder, they carry it and set it in its place, and it stands. From its place it shall not move, though one cries out to it, yet it cannot answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this, and, your, and show yourselves, men. Recall to mind, O you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand. So here God is clearly saying that we take things and we form them out of gold and silver. We make these idols. Not us in, in general, but uh, he's speaking to the people of that time. And he says, You serve them, but they do not do anything for you. And then he makes a statement about himself. He says that I am God, declaring the end from the beginning. If you turn to Revelation 1 in the New Testament we find uh, very much the same concept. Revelation, the last book in the New Testament, and we're going to look at chapter 1 and verse 1. We want to get as many scriptures today on the subject of prophecy that we can. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Looks like everybody's there. Revelation 1, verse 1, the Bible says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And so again, God telling us that He can declare the end from the beginning. He will be able to tell us the things that will shortly take place. Now just an interesting side note, many people are told not to study the book of Revelation. They say no one can understand it. Uh, you shouldn't go there, you'll get confused. But I want to clear that up today and just, uh, just jump down to verse 3 and understand that the Bible gives us a, a clear message about Revelation itself. Verse 3 says, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. And so God pronounces a blessing on those who read this book and understand